I'm going to show you an alternate way to present complicated data. Uh, suppose you have a table uh, such as this one with a lot of financial information coming from 20 different towns over seven different years and uh, a wide range from uh, a very large surplus to a substantial deficit. Now you can present people with this table and they can study it and hopefully they'll understand it, but it can be very intimidating for a lot of people. By the same token, you may want to just select this information and perhaps present it as a graph. Uh, and if you did, it would look like this. Again, just as confusing as, as the table that you were looking at. So um, perhaps there's a better way. Perhaps there's an alternate way to present this data that may be more clear to the people you're trying to get to understand it. One approach would be to take information from one line, uh, display it graphically, and then allow the person looking at the information to move up and down this line and compare one line with another uh, at their pace. And so we can do that by understanding two different functions in Microsoft Excel. Uh, one is a function called index, and then the other is to insert a uh, device called a slider uh, next to the table to, or next to the graph to give it a, a very nice feel and look and allow uh, the people looking at the information to move back and forth in a way that's very intuitive. We're going to begin by looking at the index function. And what the index function does is it tells a cell to look in a particular range of cells uh, depending on uh, what number you put in the index cell. So it's going to say look at line one or look at line two, something like that. So we're going to start this cell off uh, to begin this process. and Note that if you're beginning a function, if you just type in the function, uh, this isn't going to get you where you need to be. When you are telling a cell it's going to do a function, you need to put in the equal sign first. And then you can see that as you begin to type index, it gives you the uh, function to put in. Now it's going to want to look first for what range of cells you want in this one particular spot. And so we're going to start with the first column here, and we can do it this way by just highlighting these and telling the cell that's what we want. We then put in a comma and tell it where is the index cell, where's the cell that's going to give it directions. And so let's choose N9 right here. We're going to close this with a parentheses, although it's not absolutely necessary. And then uh, watch what happens. Here's our index cell. If we put a 1 in here, which is going to tell it to go to the first line of that uh, array, so it's not going to tell it to go to the first line of the column, but rather the first line of the array, which was 11. So we're putting in 1. There we are. We get that 42867 which is right there. Now, if we put in, let's say, 5, boom. See how it changes? It gets us down to line 5 here. And uh, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, if we follow this process with each column here following across here, so let's do this again, and I'll show you what I mean. We're going to put in index. Then this time we're going to select this array. Okay, comma. And then we're going to tell it to go to the same spot for an index. Boom, right there. And I'm just going to hit enter here without a parenthesis to show you that that works as well. Now, note what happens. We've got our 5 up here. If we go down 5 on this side, 3, 4, 5, we get this number here and then this number here, moving right along, just like we wanted to. Now, there's one little thing in here that you, you uh, may uh, want to, cor I want to correct, and that has to do with just the formatting of the cells. We want to put this in financial and we don't want cents in here. So let's just quickly make the formats match for the two columns. We're going to put in currency, we're going to get rid of the pennies, and we're going to let it turn red if it's negative. So that'll make these match even better. All right, now we're going to go right down the, the uh, line here for these. So again, we're going to go index equals index. We're going to do the third column now. and let it to here, 
Boom. And then I'm going to do it again. And we're going to use the fourth column. One, two, three, four. There we are. Put in our comma. Go here. Boom. Fifth. And then again, one, two, three, four, five. Sixth one. And then the seventh one. Okay, and so what we're doing now is if I put a one up here, it's going to reproduce this line right down the row, exactly what we want. If I put in 20, it will give us the last line here, you can see. And if you throw in the wrong number, it'll let you know. So that's how it works. We're going to now take this array and turn it into a graph. It's not too hard. So let's basically take this and go to insert graph line there. That's what we want. So let's put this over here where it looks like it belongs. And this gives us this information. Now watch what happens to this graph. Let me put in 15 and it alters the information to 15. So that is a very useful thing. Now how can we make it easier for people rather than uh, going up here and putting in a number? How can we make this a little more clear? Well, let's start by just making the graph size roughly the same size of the table. And this will become obvious in a minute as to why that's useful. And then we're going to insert a slider. To get to that, you need to go way up here to controls, insert, form controls, slider, right there. And we're gonna, since we're moving up and down a column, Let's put our slider up and down right here so that it kind of matches the way we're thinking. Good. And then we have to give the slider some directions. So we right click on it, go to Format Control, and it wants to know uh, what the minimum value is. And our minimum value is 1. We don't want to go to 0. It'll get that reference thing. Our maximum value is going to be 20. Remember, if we hit 21, it gave us problems. So 20 is going to be our big number. Incremental change is 1. Page change, meaning, meaning if you want to give it a big click, how far does it go? Kind of nice to, for this application to keep that as 1 as well. And where are you going to look for directions for this? And the answer is going to be to our index cell right here. So um, we'll give it all those directions right now. I don't know that. Well, let's keep the 3D formatting. So here's what we have. Now watch what happens as we move this. Okay, even gives us red when we go into negative numbers, which is kind of nice. Now how are people going to know where they are in this column? Probably the easiest way to do this is to take the original index here and bring it over. So we will just copy this and we're going to paste it right around here. Let's see how it looks. Okay. 
And so what we end up with at this point is a graph. Uh, we will make our slider just a little bit bigger so that the bottom of the slider hits town T there. So now when we go down, we go down to town T. We'll need to do it a little bit better than this. There. Then if we go up, get the values we want, we want it to get ourselves all the way up to town A. So again, we're we need to format this in a way that allows us to get that job done. So just watch what I'm doing here. We're going to drop it down a little bit here. We're going to move it up a little bit here. There. Now let's see if the bottom works as well. Yep. That's pretty close. So there we are. We have an interactive graphic map uh, or graphic display that allows people to use this slider, go up and down, look at data from different lines. We've shown you how to do the indexing function with each of these cells and how it works and why it works to take advantage of that indexing function with this slider and to display it graphically uh, with this. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, in preparing and displaying data.